We are all still recovering from the events, the tragic events of last week. The American flag, the national anthem has all become a much more important part of our lives. Welcome to Pacific Bell Park. Welcome to Fox Family as we bring to you the final game of this three game series between the Houston Astros and the San Francisco Giants. Two teams that have thoughts of postseason play. And for the Astros, they find themselves in the National League Central four and a half games up on the very red hot St. Louis Cardinals. And for the Giants in the NL Western Division race, two back, two games back of the Arizona Diamondbacks and two games back in the wild card race to the St. Louis Cardinals. Hi again everybody I'm Dwayne Kuyper along with my partner former 20 game winner Mike Kruko and this is September and every game in September is a big game but Mike for the Giants maybe a bigger game for them than for the Astros. No, I think there's an urgency on this game for the Giants. Dusty Baker's concerned that the offense has not cranked it back up after the six day layoff. They've only managed two runs in two games so far in this series against the Astros. Plus for Dusty Baker this is a team that the Giants might face should they get to the playoffs the Houston Astros and you cannot let them gain confidence by sweeping you at home. And the Houston Astros. Well what do we know about the Astros. We know that they had a battle with the Cubs in the early part of the season. But right now they have the best record in the National League. Yeah, And the best road record too. And consider this the Houston Astros know the importance of putting together long streaks in September. They've won seven out of their last ten ball games and they've had a, riding a three game win streak. But they're not the hottest team in their division. St. Louis Cardinals they've won nine out of ten and they've won six in a row. So with the Cardinals yipping at their heels the Astros know they have to continue to play good ball. Back at the ballpark Pac Bell Park Greg Biggio standing in facing Kirk Reeder. With a count of two balls and one strike, Reader to the plate, and Biggio pops it up. Pedro Feliz in foul territory puts it away, and the first out is recorded. Let's check out the Houston Astros lineup. And it's Greg Biggio, you just saw lead off, followed by Jose Vizcaino. Batting second is Jeff Bagwell, the cleanup hitter Lance Berkman, Moises Alou fifth, Vinny Castilla sixth, Richard Hidalgo seventh, eighth is Brad Osmus, and Wade Miller will pitch. In bat ninth. On the hill today for the Giants will be left handed seven year veteran Kirk Reeder, a sinker, slider, change type pitcher. Has to work the corners to be effective. He throws below the normal hitting speed. If you imagine that the normal fastball at the big league level is around 88 miles per hour, maybe a slightly above, Reeder will work at 84 85 miles per hour. And to do that, you've got to be able to be. In command of your fastball, you've got to work the corners. 13 11 on the year, 4.53 ERA. Opponents hitting 286 against him. This Kaino a butt out in front of the plate. Reader bare hands it spins and throws to Galarraga. And there's two out. Defensively behind Kirk Reader today, the Giants will have, in looking around the horn over at first base, the big cat. Andres Galarraga. That's how he got his nickname, the Big Cat, because he is nimble around that bag. Jeff Kent, the veteran at second base. Pedro Feliz, the rookie, over at third. And Rich Aurelia having a career year playing shortstop today. Out in left field, another career year. 63 home runs in left with Barry Bonds. Calvin Murray, great defensive player in center field. And John Vanderwall will be playing in right field with Santiago, the veteran catcher, trying to put up a a harness job on Kirk Reeder. Reeder comes into this game with a 94 and 59 lifetime record. Tremendous win percentage. Bagwell with a kind of 0 and 1, and it's outside. One ball and one strike. Reeder 5 and 4 lifetime against these Astros. Again, Reeder will tell the catchers, I'm not going to shake you off. Just don't set your target up in the middle of the plate. Work the corners. Bagwell pops it up. Galarraga coming over. Near the Houston dugout, he puts it away, and Reader with a 1 2 3 inning. So the Giants will come up. Murray, Aurelia, and Bonds, nothing, nothing. This family is brought to you by Lotriman AF. Get the cure that's proven to kill athletes' foot on the whole foot. Lotriman AF. Here's Dusty Baker's lineup, and it's brought to you by Nissan. Calvin Murray will lead it off, followed by Rich Aurelia. Barry Bonds is hitting third. Check out that slugging percentage. Jeff Kent, the cleanup hitter. Andres Galarraga, fifth. John Vanderwall in the sixth slot. Benito Santiago will hit seventh. Pedro Feliz, eighth. And Kirk Reeder will pitch ninth. 
And on the hill today for the Astros, one of their young guns just turned 25 about four days ago. Wade Miller. And this guy is quality. He is 6'2, 185 pounder, a four pitch pitcher with a fastball, curveball, slider, and a changeup. He'll throw anyone at any time. A power arm that can finesse with that changeup, and he'll work the corners. I think he thinks strikeout a little too much, as a lot of young pitchers do, but he can get a strikeout. He can strike out with any one of his pitches, and his breaking balls are very, very clean and crisp. And the fastball, unpredictable movement. And look at the numbers 16 and 7 in just his first full year at the big league level. The very stingy 3.54 ERA in a live ballpark in run field. Here's Murray to lead it off, and he takes a call strike. Anytime you see a starter having the type of numbers that Wade Miller has, and you consider the home field he has, impressive year. Murray hitting 248 takes another strike and it's 0 and 2. Five home runs, 22 RBIs. Murray splitting the center field duties this year with Marvin Bernard. On deck is Rich Aurelia. And that pitch just missed and it's 1 and 2 to Calvin Murray. If you watch Wade Miller's mechanics, very quiet with his hands as he comes set in his delivery. Got a low three quarter release, kind of a short arm release. The ball gets on you very quickly, and he'll hit 95 at times and above. Two and two to Murray. Giants seen the Astros for the first time this year on Tuesday night. And the Astros have won the first two games in this series. Inside to Murray, and it's a full count. So after falling behind 0 and 2 Murray in a spot now where he could very well see a good pitch to hit. There's Rich Aurelia. Bottom of the first. Glad you joined us. And the walk to Murray. Good bat right there. Behind Wade Miller. The Astros on defense today will have Jeff Bagwell over at first base at Gold Glover. Craig Biggio. Go Glover in two positions at second. Vinny Castilla over at third base with former giant Jose Viscaino at shortstop. Lance Berkman out in left field today. Richard Hidalgo in center. And Moises Alou in right field. Brad Osmus, one of the best defensive catchers in the game behind the dish today, calling the signals. And Wade Miller looking for win number 17. Aurelia and then Bonds. Aurelia. 33 home runs, 88 RBIs, and Aurelia steps out. And a, a soft toss to first, and Murray gets back. Murray with eight steals on the year. He's been thrown out eight times. A day at the ballpark where it started out very foggy, but uh, the sun is now starting to break through. Miller at the belt and Aurelia takes high one ball and no strike. That was the kind of pitcher that out of stretch gives you a pretty good chance to steal a bag got a real high leg kick. And if you're a base stealer. That's. About three tenths of a second that you can pick up. And that may be all the advantage you need to steal a bag. And another throw to first and this time Murray gets back easily. The one thing about this Astros defense, I mean, they got some age on them. They're not going to have the range that they had six, seven, eight years ago, but they are smart. They know hitters, they know pitch types, they know movement on what Wade Miller, Wade Miller has, and they will give themselves a. Runner goes. Aurelia hits it foul down the left field line. And it's a ball and a strike. Calvin Murray trying to take advantage of that high leg kick from Wade Miller. He's talking about the experience of this infield. They have the type of, of instinct that comes with. Age in this league is that they can anticipate where the ball is going to be hit, and they can get a step or two to the side of the field where they think the ball is going to get hit, depending on the hitter's swing type and what that particular pitcher is featuring that day. So Aurelia and a 1 1 count, and Aurelia bluffs a bun and takes a strike. Something unusual, Mike. It looked like both Biggio and Vizcaino went to cover second. Well, it's a 12:35 game after a night game. You're going to have those problems. <laughs> yeah. Coffee doesn't kick in until one o'clock. We've been there. This really is a tough day 
day game after a night game flip flop. Aurelia lines one towards the gap. It's going to fall and it's going to roll. Hidalgo picks it. Murray is coming in. Here's the throw. Not in time. And the Giants grab the early 1 0 lead. And for the Giants, you've only scored two runs in the first two games of this series. Coming up big in this ballgame, I think he'll set the early tone. Five runs, rather, two in the first game, three last night's ballgame, but good inside out swinging here from Aurelian. Finding that right center field gap. How many times have the Giants seen that this year with Aurelia, who's having a career year, has gone to the right side of second base? That has been his strength this season. Here's Bonds. And Bonds takes a strike. He didn't think so as he looks back at Paul Schreiber, the home plate umpire. 316, 63 home runs, and 121 RBIs. And of course, like most teams, the shift, the Barry Bond shift. The wishbone defense. Owen one to Bonds. Bonds takes the low. I mean, Kai, you're a former infielder of the big league for 10 years. You told me something a few years ago about how power hitters hit ground balls that are louder and stronger and get to the to the infielders faster than normal hitters and Bonds is that type of hitter and that's why I think this defense makes sense sending Biggio the second baseman for the Astros that deep into short outfield. Now the big guys don't hit too many routine ground balls. Bonds hits one to right. Alou on the move. Still on the move and it's up against the wall. Here comes Aurelia. He will trot in. Bonds with a double two nothing. And then back to back doubles. And what makes this guy so special is the shortness of his swing and the power that, can he, that he can generate with hand speed. A short foot plant rotates right around the ball. His theory in hitting, wait for the ball to get to you. The short plant and just rifles the hands to the ball. And he did not hit this ball well. It was off towards the end of the bat. And yet he still rifles it out there about 415 feet away. Aurelia, who knocked in his 89th in this inning, also comes around to score. And here's Jeff Kent. Kent takes a, a breaking ball in for a strike, and it's 0 1. The run that Aurelia scored, 101 runs now he's. Had this year, so it gives you an idea of the benefits of not only having a good year offensively, but hitting in front of Barry Bonds. In tight to Kent to even the count. Now that is one of the sweetest spots in the in all of baseball to be hitting the number two spot ahead of Bonds. Bill Miller held that position for years, hit in front of Bonds, was traded over to the Chicago Cubs in the offseason. He winds up hitting in front of Sammy Sosa. Kent. Holes up and it's two balls in one strike. Talk about hitting the lottery twice. The big cat, Andre Scalaraga on deck. I like watching the center field camera, pitchers like Wade Miller, you really get an idea as to what type of movement they have. And this fastball is one that at 92 to 95 miles per hour will bore hard in on a right handed hitter. Jams a lot of guys breaks a lot of bats. Kent, big hopper to Castillo. And Castillo will take his time he throws a bit low but Bagwell hangs on. And Kent is retired Bond stays at second. Not a productive at bat for Kent. Tuesday night. Andre Scalaraga hit the longest home run in Pac Bell Park history. Look where this thing lands. Completely over the bleacher section in mid left field. And the ball rolled through the stands and dropped in the parking lot behind the stadium, behind the stands. And one of the guys who was working in the uh, production crew, television crew, found it in the parking lot. Picked it up. Had Galarraga sign it. 
I mean the ball went right here. And then bounced and rolled through the stadium. You can see 501 right here. That is well, we think it's unreachable <laughs> after Galarraga's blast didn't get close. Big chopper right back to Miller and Galarraga is gone and there's two away and that'll bring up John Vanderwall. We spoke to some people that were sitting in the left field bleachers the next day and they said it was unusual to sit that far high up in the bleachers to watch a ball go way over your head. And, uh, it's right in the area where it just sail over everybody. Here's Vanderwall hitting 268, 63 RBIs. Bonds still at second, 2 0 Giants. Vanderwall did not play last night. Vanderwall coming over in a trade right before the trading deadline. Many of the Brian Sabian trades that uh, help boost this Giants roster. 1 0. Two balls and no strike. Vanderwall has that label of professional hitter. And he goes after a, a pitch that was down around the knees, two balls and one strike. Get a label of professional hitter. I mean, that means a guy who goes up there and, and, and has quality at bats every time he steps in that batter's box. Even if you get him out, it seems like you wind up throwing the guy six, seven pitches in the at bat. I mean, it's it's work to get him out. Makes a lot of hard contact. I mean, I get hits every time, but he's going to hit the ball hard. Outside corner strike two and two. We saw a shot at the scoreboard here at Pac Bell Park. The Cubs held on to beat Cincinnati six to five. The Cubs led in that game six to nothing. So the Reds coming back but falling short. Two two to Vanderwall. And now it's a full count. Cubs very much alive in the wild card race. I mean into today's game the Cubs were two and a half back of the Cardinals. Three and two to Vanderwall. A base open. And a high fly ball into center field for Richard Hidalgo. That will end the inning. Giants score twice a pair of doubles and a walk. And as we've completed two innings it's two nothing Giants. All right, after one, it's 2 nothing Giants. Last night, an interesting little scenario. Mike, take us through it. Well, Lance Berkman, in a 7 to nothing ball game, in a one-out situation, tried to steal a bag. He was thrown out, and the Giants were offended by the fact that he would steal in a 7 nothing game. Rusty Baker tells him, I didn't help tell Lance, I didn't tell Ainsworth. Kurt Ainsworth to throw at you. But nevertheless, Kurt Ainsworth, a rookie and just his second appearance ever at the major league level, sending a purpose pitch to Berkman, telling him that the Giants didn't appreciate the steal situation with a 7 0 lead. The unwritten rule, again, you've heard so much about this summer, violated. Berkman, a switch hitter, takes the pitch outside, 1 0. The Astros today said, you know, we don't buy into the unwritten rule. We were in a ball game earlier this year, up six runs in Pittsburgh. And that's foul. With two outs in the bottom of the ninth, nobody on base. Mike Jackson on the mound, who is almost automatic in those situations. And the Pirates came back and scored seven runs against Jackson and Billy Wagner, their very, very fine closer. And they won that ball game. Plus, they play in a ballpark in Ron Field, which is a very live offensive field. So they are accustomed to not really playing, paying much attention to the score. But nevertheless, a purpose pitch was sent by the youngster, and uh, I don't think Berkman or any other Astro will steal if they get a seven run lead today. Two balls in a strike. And it's outside three and one. However, they might 
when the Giants get to Enron Field the last week of the season. Lance Burke, but boy, did he steal the show this year in Houston. And the leadoff walk. We talk about a lineup that's full of stars Biggio, Bagwell, Alou, Hidalgo. Many believe that Lance Berkman's the MVP of this Astros club this year. And he can hit. Yeah. The inning this all happened with Berkman last night was the ninth inning. And the exclamation point was put on by Moises Alou, who hit a home run off of Ainsworth, a very long home run to left field. And the uh, he put a charge into it. Well, there's certain times when players go up there trying to hit home runs, and I believe that was one of those times. And he got a hanging breaking ball from the rookie Ainsworth, and he said, milked it. And it also brought him to 95 RBIs as he closes in on 100. Now, Lou's got some of the quickest hands in all of baseball. Gets up there, no batting gloves, hits commando style. Barehanded. I asked him about that. He says, You know, I just like to feel the wood in my hands. I always have. Two for 11 in his career against Reeder. Overall batting 338. Alou with another very good season. On deck is Vinny Castilla. Outside, no, three and zero. Reader thought he had it. Now Lou is tied for second in the National League in batting average. Paul Schreiber behind the plate, a little wide. As was that one, back-to-back -back walks, and Castillo is coming up. Now Kirk Reader. Getting a two to nothing lead in the bottom of the first. Don't like to set the table in the top of the second with a couple of walks, and it's going to bring out the skipper, Dusty Baker. Well, this is unusual, Mike. It's Dave Rigetti that usually comes out unless there's a pitching change. So Dusty Baker obviously has something on his mind. First question out of his mouth will be, Are you all right? How do you feel? And then the next question, what the heck are you doing? Throw strikes or throw a strike. Well, the one thing Reader tries to do in a game, like a lot of finesse pitchers, and, and that's establish the outside strike. Then once you get the outside corner, see how far you can get off of the plate that'll be called a strike. And right now he's just about two inches away from the golden pitch. And the golden pitch for him is three inches off the plate away to right-handed hitters. His fastball has a little tail that'll run away from a right hand hitter, the lower he gets to the strike zone to the knee, the more it runs. 1 and 0 to Castillo. And he will just stay out there. Castillo, 280, 22 home runs, 76 RBIs. The reader gets you thinking away, then he'll lock you up with something right on the hands. That's a solid single in the center field. Murray gets to it quickly. Berkman got a, a poor jump, so he can only go to third. And they're loaded for Richard Hidalgo. So a pair of walks and a solid single. And here's Hidalgo. 17 home runs. Quite a bit different than last season. Hidalgo hit 44 home runs. This year really has been pulling off the balls, giving up the outside plate a lot, and it has cost him a lot of power. To left. Bonds got a beat on it. He will make the catch. Tagging is Berkman. He'll come in to score. And the Astros are on the board. It's two to one Giants. Now that's good situational hitting right there for Hidalgo. You're looking for something you can get a good swing at to get the ball lifted in the air. You think sacrifice fly. You don't try to get too much. If you get a base hit, a double home run, hey, all the better. But at the very least you want to come out of that at bat as a sack fly.
Catcher Brad Osmus. Alou at second at first is Castilla. Berkman in. For hitters, when they get that batter's box against Kirk Reeder, you better get ready to go. He likes to work at quick pace. And there's the outside corner Reeder was looking for, and it's 0 and 1. Reeder will be a little more deliberate out of the stretch. Very quick out of the windup. And right now he's pitching for a ground ball, looking for something to get a couple outs with, get out of this inning. Low and away. If you look at Reader's style, you think this guy's a sinker slider guy, but he averages more fly balls than than ground balls, but he's very good at pitching for the ground ball situation, which is what he's pitching for right now. A ball and a strike. Can't juggle it. Everybody is safe. Is Aurelia was coming across the bag, was not on the bag, and they're loaded for Wade Miller. It'll be an error on Jeff Kent, who hasn't made many errors this year. Just a little bobble on the exchange, glove hand to bare hand. Uh, Taylor made one hop, easy double play, get you out of the inning, go grab some water, and everybody's st safe. I mean, the thing about this play is it really is it bo it's botched twice. One on the exchange, and the other that it really does not stay in the bag to receive the throw to get the force. So now Miller has a chance to to help his own cause. He's 10 for 55 this year and reader will look for the double play ball again. And it's outside one and oh. Miller can swing a little bit hitting 182. Off the leg of reader Kent knocks it down. The run will score. It ties it up, and the bases stay loaded. It'll be a hit for Miller and an RBI, and the inning goes on. Now, right now, Reed has got to take a little walk around the mound. He's got to maintain his composure here. This is just simply a bad break. Looking for a ground ball. Ball hit up off of his leg. They had been pinching the middle infielders close to the bag at second. It probably would have been a ball that was caught and turned into a pair. Of outs to get him out of the inning as it is. Kent makes a nice play just to stop the ball from going into the outfield. That would have scored another run. And now Reader's got to face a guy who's really had great lifetime success against him. And the first pitch is low to Biggio. Biggio popped out to Pedro Feliz in foul territory in the first inning. And he's hitting 433 lifetime against Reader. Strike at the knees to even the count. Reader. Dusty Baker. One ball and one strike to Biggio. Swing and a miss. One and two. Oh, just threw a balloon floater change up up there. Really had. Biggio fouled up and off balance. Just a big old sweeper. That wasn't a change. That was a curveball. Whatever it was, it floated. On the ground, foul just wide a third. What a nice pick by the ball, dude. That guy's got great range. I guess the day game. After a night game hasn't affected the ball, dude. Now we got to get this guy's scout report. At least find out who's giving it to him. He's got to play perfectly. One and two to Biggio. Back to Reader. He'll come home. Santiago to Galarraga. And that ends the inning. So in the end, Reader does get the double play. And he gets it. One, two, three. Two, two tie. Two to two as we go to the bottom of the second inning. Both managers here today, former players, one a pitcher, one a hitter. And the first, Larry Durker, the pitcher. Fifth season at the helm of the Astros, three division championships. Stumbled last year, but has rebounded nicely. 
13 year veteran as a pitcher a power pitcher 20 game winner in 1969. His opponent Dusty Baker who played 16 years as a player and a very good very good playing career three time manager of the year his ninth year at the helm of the Giants. And as good a player as he was cap I think he's a better manager. And uh, Dusty Baker Larry Durker. Went up against each other many times. Here's Benito Santiago to lead it off. Santiago hitting 269. So Miller, after giving up two runs in the second, has his team come back and tie it up. And Santiago takes a pitch in the dirt, one ball and no strikes. Strike to Santiago. One ball and one strike. I should also mention that Larry Durker, not just a former player, former broadcaster. And that's significant. Another strike to Santiago, one and two. Santiago in disagreement of that call from plate umpire Paul Schreiber. He thought that ball was outside. Santiago taking a little bit more time than usual getting back in. Foul back. Santiago, you put a pork pie hat on Santiago. He looks like Carlos Santana. You have to ask him if he plays the guitar. He has done a sensational job for the Giants this year. Really one of the better framers in the game. Good receiver, good framer. Here's the one two on the ground to third Castilla goes down to a knee to Bagwell 1976 Larry Durker tossed a no hitter against the Montreal Expos it was the fifth no hitter in franchise history those are some funky unis though man Whew. the old Astrodome the <laughs> the old Houston Astros uniforms. Here's Pedro Feliz. Feliz out of play into the upper deck. Astrodome was a great place to pitch, but boy, the Astros as an organization have always come up with with power arms. Don Wilson, Larry Durker, and Nolan Ryan came through the organization, not up from within the minor league system, but certainly established himself in. Houston as a power pitcher J.R. Richards probably the most dominant arm of his era no spookier at bat than J.R. Richards going to the Feliz hop to right field for Moises Alou Alou under it and there's two away like this this ball club this 2001 version of the Astros has really endeared themselves to the Astros fans in Houston because they're bringing back the power pitcher for a franchise that's accustomed to the power arm. They got a, a bunch of youngsters now that that throw rockets. Roy Oswald, Wade Miller today, Tim Redding, Billy Wagner, whole slew of them. Octavio Dotel. There's a strike to Reader. There's Oswald who will miss a start with a groin injury that. Happened to him on Tuesday. That is a fair ball. Castilla to Bagwell to end the inning. It was home plate umpire Paul Schreiber making the call. All right, we've played two innings here in San Francisco. It's Houston 2, San Francisco 2. More baseball coming up on FX on Saturday night. It'll be the Giants and Padres in San Diego. And then on Fox Family next Thursday, you can watch these Houston Astros take on. The Chicago Cubs. So teams that are all trying to get to postseason, with the exception of the Padres, and all the Padres are doing is trying to keep teams from getting to postseason. 
Here it's two to two. That really is the responsibility of a team. It's not in the race to be a spoiler. And you know the Padres have been doing a pretty good job with that in mind. As they swept the, the Dodgers. The Dodgers have lost five straight. Dodgers in Arizona will play tonight in L.A. Here's Jose Vizcaino to lead it off third inning. Off the end of the bat down the right field line foul and brought his glove reached over and took it away from another fan who brought his glove. Now you bring your glove you get a ball. Nice play. High backhand reach it across good concentration of the ball. Low to Vizcaino a ball and a strike. I love it when fans bring their fans their well bring their fans but bring their ball ball gloves to the to the yard. Show off your rag. Almost in the same spot out of play and it's one and two. When the Giants moved over from Candlestick Park to Pac Bell Park quite a bit different for the fans because the ballpark is so much closer to the playing field. And a lot of fans started bringing gloves out of necessity to, to protect themselves. One two pitch Vizcaino strokes it into left center field Murray. With room puts it away. And when they come here they use them. Here's Bagwell who. Popped out to Galarraga. In the first inning. Really a, an unorthodox style. I mean, he really spreads those legs out wide and hits out of a squat. At least he sets up as a squat. There's a strike. Looks like he's straddling the puddle. Don't want to get his shoes wet. And make a difference how you you set up. It's it's how you get into your swing. And he doesn't take a stride. He basically lifts up the front foot and puts it back down. And then opens up the hips. It is not a way you would want to go to a young player and say, okay, do it this way. But you reach a comfort level, which Bagwell has, and it works. And I think he pinches the strike zone for a, for a pitcher who's, who's facing him. You watch him sit down in a crouch, and all of a sudden you look, that strike zone looks like it gets boxed and pinched. And he's also a guy that likes the ball up around the belt. Good cripple hitter. You you float something up there that hangs around the belt. He's going to wear you out. And he wore one out last night hitting his 37th home run. Here's the 3 1. And a strike to even the count or to make it a full count. Six years in a row he's had 30 plus homer years and 100 RBI or more years. That's doing it. Payoff pitch Bagwell to right field a base hit. So nice hitting from Jeff Bagwell as he goes the opposite way. And that'll bring up Lance Berkman. And for a guy with power here's a guy hitting a two strike adjustment. It's three two. You know that readers tendency is to work the outside part of the plate. We'll go with it. Gets himself down straight the hands stay back. And once you get the foot almost comes back. It's not a stride forward. It's a stride back. Gets himself in perfect position. Those hips are located and they're firing right out to where that contact zone is. Sweet hitting right there. Berkman drew a walk in the second. And he takes a strike. And you want your your power hitters to get up there and flail. If you're Kirk Reader and you throw below the hitting speed, you rely on guys trying to freewheel, hit the ball a long ways. But a guy who goes the opposite way and hits the outside pitch to right field, that's a guy that's going to give Reader trouble. Give a lot of guys trouble. Shot of Bagwell with his lead. He's got nine steals on the year. Berkman lines it fair down the left field line. Bonds will have to dig it out cleanly. The ball dies on Bonds, and now they're going to wave in Bagwell as Bonds couldn't get it out, and Bagwell will score. And Berkman has a double. Hey. 
Herkman going down to get a pretty good pitch. The location on this, the ball's down low, out over the plate. And hooks it down the left field line. And this is where you run into a, a bit of trouble for Bonds. That slight bobble right there allows Bagwell to come all the way in from first base. Here's Alou who drew a walk in the second. Berkman with RBI number 113 on the year. And Alou swings and hits one high and foul into the upper deck. So a single by Bagwell, a double by Berkman. Misses in one ball and one strike. And as a base runner, crack of the bat, you go out there and anticipate the lead bag until you're called off by your third base coach. A little stutter step as Galanti put up the stop sign, and then he took it off and waved him in. Slide bobble, cost you a run. 93 feet. Reader took something off, way outside, two balls and one strike. That play scoring from first base only works when you have a runner who's busting his tail. Two and one to Alou. And that's chopped foul at the plate, two and two. Astros have won 12 of their last 16 and 19 of their last 25. And the Giants find themselves in a spot where, after losing the first two games in this series, need to win here today before they head to San Diego for a weekend series. Alou to the right side. Kent has it. He will take his time to Galarraga. Alou out and on the play, Berkman goes to third. And that'll bring up Vinny Castillo. This Astros lineup was well stacked before the Astros picked up Vinny Castillo. A predominantly right handed hitting lineup, but nevertheless, a lineup that can score some runs on their opponents, and Castilla dribbles it foul, and it's 0 1. Castilla really never enjoyed Tampa Bay. And quite happy to be back into the National League where he really made his name in a Rockies uniform. Yeah, Tampa Bay released him May 11th. Four days later, he was in an Astros uniform. You consider that his season didn't really start till the 15th of May. And he's got 76 RBIs coming into today's ball game. And he's had a great year for him. Pitch is outside. First saw this guy coming to the league when he was picked up by the Colorado Rockies in the expansion draft. And I really thought he was going to have some problems with the inside pitch. I thought the swing was long. Boy, and watching him over the years, this guy's one of the best fastball hitters in the league. Inside, outside, up, down, it didn't make a difference. Got to finesse Vinny Castilla. A lot of off-speed stuff. Don't get, ever get predictable in a fastball count. He will wear you out. Aurelia charges. He has it. Throws to Galarraga to end the inning. Two hits in the inning. Astros with a run as we head to the bottom of the third 3-2 Houston. Bonds hits it out of here. Bonds to right field and deep. 62. It's a rocket. Where's it going to go? It is out of here. 63. That was a week ago Sunday in Denver where Bonds hit three home runs and Bonds will hit third here in the third inning as Murray bluffs a bun and takes a call strike. 3-2 Houston leading. 
Yeah, that three home run effort by Bonds. Second time he's done that for the Giants this year. Third time in his career. Murray fouls this one into the glove of Osmus Murray in the first inning. Let off the bottom of the first with a walk and then came around to score. Right to Castillo. And that's out number one. Good at bat for Murray. Waiting well on the curveball. Location was not good on the pitch from middle. Watch the location. It's up. They want to set this target way outside. It lays up there at the belt, middle in, and he smokes it. And sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Adam Ball. Rich Aurelia doubled in Murray in the first. It'll be interesting to see how the Giants adjust to Wade Miller the second time through the lineup. Outside to Aurelia. Think about Wade Miller. I mean, this is his 29th start, 24 of his first 28 starts. He's pitched at least six innings. Aurelia hits one over the leaf beam, Vizcaino for a base hit. For whatever Miller's feature, and it's not fooling Rich Aurelia. Second bullet he's had today. And here comes Barry Bond. Bonds bouncing off the right center field wall for a double in the first. There's the Armada waiting for a, a hopeful home run from Bonds. There have been 16 splash hits hit here at Pacdale Park. They only record the home runs that go in the water hit by Giants players. Bonds has 14 of them. Outside to Bonds, and those, of course, are in the history of this ballpark, not just this year. Ironically, Felipe Crespo, a former Giant, now with the Phillies, has the other two. 1 0 to Bonds. Bouncing ball foul. As it rolls down into the Astros bullpen, it's a ball and a strike. Sixty three times he's been able to trot around the bags this year. Five hundred and fifty seven times in his career. Swing and a foul to shoot straight back, and it's one and two. Ooh, he was on that one. Every time you see a fastball go straight back, that hitter's on it. Ball goes straight back, just underneath it. And Wade Miller, I mean, he's he's a pitcher who's got some attitude out there. He he likes his stuff. Throw 95 miles per hour. It's easy to like that kind of stuff, but his curveball is slider. He, he's not going to back down for Bonds. He's going to go after him. Shift is on for Bonds. One and two. Strike three call. Schreiber rings him up. And there's two down. Oh, what a nice payoff pitch. A backdoor sinker, if you would, with movement that comes back across the plate. He starts him out of way high. Fastball in on the hands, fastball away, and here's the one two fastball. He gives up on it. The movement takes it right back inside the inside corner. See you later. And that's what a power pitcher likes to do punch you out with his fastball. And that's his great location in a one two count. Can't ground it out to third in the first. Aurelia board at first with two outs. And Kent, a big chopper right to the Giants manager. Kent with 89 RBIs, 19 home runs. Outside corner, nothing in two. Andres Galarraga would hit if Kent keeps this inning alive. 3 2 Houston. We're in the bottom of the third inning here at 
Pacific Belt Park. And Miller tried the same pitch he threw to Bonds, and it's one and two. Yeah, Wade Miller not afraid to come inside. He will challenge that inside corner, and he'll also do it a two strike count. Easy to see why the Astros are so high on this young right hander. And that ends it is Kent out on strikes. And the Giants strand Aurelia. We've threat played three innings here in San Francisco, 3 2 Houston. The NL West brought to you by Nissan. The Giants come into this game two back of Arizona. Dodgers are four back. But uh, also in the wild card race, the Giants find themselves two back. Cubs win today. They're two back. Dodgers four back. Phillies four back. But the Phillies right now are trying to catch the Atlanta Braves. As Richard Hidalgo steps in, a three to two Houston lead here in the fourth. And that is pulled down the left field line. Foul. I mean, Hidalgo didn't even swing hard. Uh, he's got that type of bat speed where he doesn't have to. As we mentioned earlier, 44 home runs last year, 17 coming to this game this year. And he just missed one there. Just hooked foul. Cadalgo got off to a bit of a slow start this year with a long ball and tried to play catch up all year long. There's a strike. And you can't hit 44 home runs in a single at bat and to a degree he was trying to do that. Here's the 0-2 to Hidalgo, and that's in tight one and two. Plus, hitting coaches will tell you home runs come with good swings. They don't come when you try to hit them. You try to hit him, you drop that back shoulder, lift and separate, pop it up. Home runs come off of good swings. Sort of like your home run, Kai. If you right. hit one in 10 years, yeah. I mean, that's, that's what happened to you. It was a good swing. Unfortunately, I couldn't duplicate that swing. You only have to hit one. One every 10 years. Outside, two and two to Hidalgo. Now you look at Hidalgo's numbers in the minor leagues. Until last year, the most home runs he'd ever hit in the season was 15. So you go from 15 to 44. And that's driven into right field. Vanderwall is going to glove it in Hidalgo with a, a wide turn and a leadoff single. Well, this is what he wasn't doing early in the year. That's going to right field. Got a little pull happy, forgot the outside part of the plate. And watch the front side stay in and allow him to cover and drive the outside part of the plate. It's just good positioning to beat the outside pitch. And so far today, the Astros have really caused readers some fits because they're going the opposite way on him. Staying inside the ball and hitting that outside corner pitch. Here's Osmus who reached on a Kent air in the second. And that's hit into center field. And Murray's going to back off and play it on a hop. And it's back to back singles, both hit very well, yeah. bringing Miller to the plate. Well, when seven and eight can set it up for nine, it's just the way you'd like to write it up. All right, seven and eight set it up for the the pitcher to put down a bunt. This bunt should go down the third baseline. Giants will crash Reader hard to the third baseline, anticipation of trying to get the lead out at third. The guy who's in the hot speed seat here is Pedro Feliz, the Giants' third baseman. And the bunt goes to third, but it rolls foul. Third baseman's got to be responsible for the ball and the bag. Ball's buttered hard, and he sees it's going to get past the pitcher. Then he's responsible to make the play and get the out of first. The ball's buttered to third base, and it's going to be a ball that the pitcher is going to be able to get. He's got to get his tail back to third base and be able to to receive the throw to try and get the force. Brian Bowringer heads down to the bullpen for the Giants. Bowringer, a right-hander. Miller squares around and the bunt and this one rolls foul as well and it's now 0 and 2.
Three two Houston. We're in the fourth inning. Matt Galante is going to go with the verbal sign. Watch the technique of Wade Miller. Get the bat above the strike zone, bend the knees. If the ball is below the, the bat, bunt it. If it's above the bat, take it. The technique does everything right, but bunt it fair. Get that bat head out in front of his eyes, too. That's one of the biggest mistakes that young bunters make. They drop that bat back. Keep it out in front so you can see contact with the ball and the bat. Reader does a half spin to chase Hidalgo back. Miller was showing signs that on 0-2 he's going to try to bunt again. And he takes it outside one and two. Now I like the fact that Miller's getting out there and showing that bunt early because that will freeze the infielders a little bit. From that position it's easy to slash the ball the bat back and get into that slug bunt. Where you fake bunt and then put a swing on the ball. And Miller bunted it twice. And he's out. And that'll be a strikeout for Reader is first. Now Giants looking for a break, get one. It keeps the force in order. Again, does everything right, but make good contact to get the ball fair. So it hit him in the shoulder. And now here's Biggio who popped out on the first and then hit into a one, two, three double play. This guy's grungy. Pine tar on his shoulder. Hat looked like he just crawled out of a sandbox. You think this guy was a grungy little kid? Mm -hmm. Feliz will go to second. And they get one at second, and that's all. And the Astros will have runners at the corners with two outs. Nice pick there by the rookie Pedro Feliz. Kind of an off balance choke. He gets the short hop and still gets the lead bag at second. So he gets a, a potential runner. Nails him at second, gets him out of scoring position. Mike, I think he really thought about just going to first and then at the last second changed his mind. Yeah, I agree with you. Didn't really have himself squared to second base. Kind of an off balance throw. The Giants were lucky to get him out there. That could have been disastrous. This guy is 0 for 2. And he takes a strike and it's 0 and 1. Nevertheless, it was a nice pitching job from Reeder, who career wise has had real problems with Bichio. So far today, Bichio has got an 0 for 3 going. We saw Bowringer getting loose. Outside to even the count. Well, waits on deck. Those are prescription glasses that this guy in wears. Just miss two and one. Some of the umpires behind home plate. Thinking that maybe that pitch was a strike. It's two and one. Center field Murray comes in now he freezes and he makes the catch to end the inning. Giants coming up 3 2 Houston. Well Fox family is giving you the golden ticket to the 30th anniversary presentation of the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Digitally remastered and in its entirety with exclusive behind the scenes stories tomorrow. Right here on the Fox Family Channel. Check it out. Willy Wonka, one of my personal favorites. I played with that guy. Yeah, second baseman in the uh, Tiger organization. That's it. Willie could hit. 3 2. If your name is Willie, you got to hit. Here's the big cat. Fouled off the screen and it's 0 and 1. I was kind of an Oopa Loopa guy myself. I mean, think about the Giants' history Willie Mays, Willie McCovey, 
Willy Wonka. Uh, it ain't working, pal. All right. Oh, one to Galarraga in a late call by Paul Schreiber, and it's 0 2. Galarraga does not usually say a whole lot to umpires, and he is voicing dis disapproval. The set up outside, ball going across the plate inside. Now that's effective wildness right there. Strike three call, and that one, I'm sure Galarraga has no complaints. Three strikeouts in a row for Wade Miller going for the three four five guys and he comes right back to the inside corner and freezes Galarraga and there's the corner pitch perfect. Anytime you can get a big hitter to not even be able to get off a swing you've made a great pitch. Here's Vanderwall. Vanderwall hit a fly ball to center field in the first. Two and zero oh with Benito Santiago on deck. Some subtle changes in the way Wade Miller grips the ball alters the movement that the hitter sees. It was a four seam fastball comes back in the same location with a two seam fastball. The velocity different by a couple miles per hour. The movement's different, and this young arm. I mean, he understands that, and that's something that normal big league pitchers don't get a grasp of till they pitch at this level for five or six years. And a strike to Vanderwall three and one. I mean he's just cruising, changing his his grips and working the corners. Not even using a breaking ball a whole lot or the changeup. And the walk to Vanderwall bringing Santiago to the plate. Second walk issued by Miller. He walked Murray. The first hitter that he faced in this game. Santiago grounded out to Vinny Castilla in the second. Okay, when you have a, a pitcher that's corner pitching and he's moving his locations around with consistency and command, and he's altering the different movements that he can put on a, on a ball, and just the little sp subtle speed changes. I mean, how do you approach a guy like that? Well, I think you split the plate in half, and until you get two strikes, pick out a half. Hit and run is on. A ball hit into the hole. This kind of long throw is in time to get Santiago. Now Dusty Baker trying to shake things up. Putting a hit and run on. And for Vizcaino, who's breaking towards the bag at second, has to come back across his body's momentum to his backhand. And you better have a strong arm to pull this play off because it's an all arm throw. Not a whole lot of legs underneath it. And look at that. He beats it by a bunch. Of course, it helps too when you got a guy who's a catcher. Catcher's legs in September are usually pretty heavy. That doesn't take away from the effort from this guy. That was a nice play. Osmus goes out and has a word with Miller. Now, the word is very simple. He's got an open first base. He's got a number eight hitter and a pitcher on deck. Who's rather pitch to? And if you're going to pitch to Pedro Feliz, stay in the corners. Three two Houston six runs for the or six hits for the Astros three for the Giants. And Feliz takes a pitch just off the plate one and zero. Oh. And you're right it looks like that's probably what they'll try to do. And for Pedro Feliz he's got to identify what the scenario is. And look to that outside part of the plate. just stay out there look away try and go to right field. Hidalgo coming in. And he makes the catch as the ball hangs up, and that ends the inning. Giants strand one after four. It's 3 2 Astros. Fifth inning, 3 2 Houston, and out in McCovey Cove. It's a little relaxation going on. Well, the Giants games are sold out for the rest of the year, and I don't think this guy cares. He's got a pretty good seat. I think he's babysitting somebody else's. Vehicle. <laughs> the American flag all over the place. Very much a part of the ballpark now. And here's Kirk Reeder facing Jeff Bagwell. 
and a rocket foul. Look out. I think that was a little bit too much line drive for a ball dude down there. Talked about the American flags that are all over Pac Bell Park, all over baseball, really. Both the Giants and the Astros affected by the tragedy in New York. Rich Aurelia, a native of Brooklyn, classmates in high school that he very close to, still missing. Ron Vallone, teammate, football teammate of his in college. His wife was on one of the planes that crashed into the towers. Very somber time for both sides of the field, as for all of us. 0 oh, 2 pitch to Bagwell, and that's off the end of the bat. Galarraga can't get it, and they called it a fair ball. And a fan is going to try to get out and touch it, but now he jumps back into the seats, and Bagwell with a double. That was squibbed right off the end of the bat, and Galarraga couldn't get to it. The little backdoor slider hit right off the end of the bat. It's an unusual stance we're talking about. Draws back in, rotates through, ball stays fair. Watch the fan coming out here. Kind of a rock and a hard place right here for this guy. Should I go or should I stay? Well, what you should do is get back into your seat as quickly as you can. Really a, an unusual bounce working its way away from Galarraga. You don't see that type of spin very often. Cues down to in the bullpen of the Astros. Now yeah, you're right. If you come to the ball yard, stay in your chair. Berkman is walked and doubled. He's got an RBI and he scored a run. Well, Reader with another stress in. He had a 1 2 3 first, and after that, it seems like the rest of the game he's been in a stretch. His next pitch will be a 75th. 2 0. Now he'll use an open first base here and nibble. He walks Berkman and sets up a force, and he's not really concerned about losing Berkman to a walk. He doesn't want to give Berkman too good a pitch to hit right now. Two balls and a strike to Berkman. Well, that's a good swing. Berkman's bat really stays in that zone a long time, stays flat, quick hands. Has risen quickly as a National League star. Off the end of the bat, foul. Yeah, here's a team with Bagwell, Alou, Castilla, Hidalgo. And Berkman finds himself the cleanup hitter. Did you ever hit cleanup? Now we pulled the position in the order out of a hat one year when I was with the Indians and Boot Powell drew the leadoff position and I drew the cleanup spot. <laughs> so did you hit there? Yes, I did. 2 2 pitch. Swing and another chopper foul. That wasn't the night you hit your home run, was it? No. But it was great. We were playing in Arlington and can't remember who was pitching for the Rangers, but on the very first pitch of the game, Boot Powell tried to drag Bunt his way on to first base. <laughs> no, he did. Yes, he did. Did you win that game? We did not. We did not use the lineup again the next day either. There is not a happy ending to that story. Two and two. Well, who's more disappointed you didn't use the lineup the next day? You were Boog. Well, I didn't. And I didn't want to hit cleanup. I was actually just pretty happy to be in the lineup, in the hat. But uh, Frank Robinson, no, we got to shake things up. We did shake things up. 3 2 pitch. High bouncing ball. It really has to wait on a tricky hop. They get Berkman, but Bagwell very alertly goes to third. Well, the high bounce allowed Bagwell. The ability to move up 90 feet. That's good baseball running instincts right there. But Aurelia makes a nice dig. I mean, that ball really comes up on him. Very easy for this ball to shoot by you. So good base running. 
puts Bagwell at third. Now the Giants are going to have to bring that infield in. That first step right there, that's instinct. Alou has walked and he's grounded out. Infield in. Up and in for a ball one and zero. Oh. And now Bowringer for the third time in this game heads down to the Giants bullpen. Yeah, I think Bowringer's thrown more pitches today than Reeder has. Well, he certainly has made that trip a few times. Three to Houston, fifth inning. Just off the plate, two and zero. Oh. You now Reeder's going to work a Lou like he worked. Berkman lowered the knees away, trying to get him to hit his pitch. He's got two open bags to work with. Seven hits for Houston, three for the Giants. Outside again, and it's three and zero. Oh. And right now, I don't think Reader cares if he walks Alou or not. Well, as good as Reader is at pitching for the ground ball in double play situations, I mean, this is not a, a a real bad thing if he walks a little because it sets up the force and relaxes the middle infielders. Right now, his infield's pinched in. Off the end of the bat, and it's three and one. Boy, Olu was looking away. 3 0 count. He's looking for something out and away, but he had a huge lean. Watch the lean that he has trying to look for the outside pitch. Jumping out there. The hitter does that, boy, you better come back inside. And they are coming in. And Alou spins on it, but he hits it foul, and it's 3 and 2. Uh, that's good call by Santiago. You can't let a hitter jump out that far on the outside part of the plate. He'll cover six to eight inches off the plate away. Came right back inside. And you could go right back in there again. A little bit higher at the belt. Three and two to Alou. Drives it to left. Barry Bonds is there. He'll make the catch. But Alou gets the job done with a sacrifice fly. Oh, he does a good job of that. Alou had a, a very similar at bat in the first game of the series where he took it to a, a one two count, got a sack fly to center field. Just good situational baseball right there. And it's a four to two lead now for the Astros. And here's Vinny Castilla. So the leadoff double by Bagwell. Gets the Astros a run, and Castilla, who was leaning out, has to jump back to get out of the way for a ball one and zero. Teams are going to adjust as they hit you a second, third time in a ball game. They're going to adjust. If you're working them on side of the plate, they're going to leave him out there. So Lou do it. Saw Castilla do it. Got to keep honest on that inside part of the plate. Hopped him up. Kent going out. Vanderwall coming in. Vanderwall makes the adjustment and puts it away. Astros pick up a run. Giants coming up in the bottom of the fifth, 4 2, Houston. Well, postseason is not that far away. And uh, you can check out a lot of the postseason action right here on Fox Family. Postseason on Fox. It begins October 9th. Boy, the season goes quick. Here's Jalal Leach as a pinch hitter, and he takes a fastball down low. 4 2, Houston. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning, and Jalal Leach, last night after 12 years in the minor leagues, picked up his first major league hit. And a swing and a miss, and it's a ball and a strike. Pretty emotional swing of the bat, as you can well imagine. You ride the buses in the minor leagues for 12 years, and you finally get the call up at age 31. And last night he got. His big big batting average going. There's a call. Strike at the knees one and two. Many times throughout that 12 years, Jalal Leach thought about doing something else. Swing and a foul back. The son of a San Francisco cop.
Now they finally call him up. They pulled him out of the shower to do it. And he thought that it was a practical joke being played upon him. Swing and a miss, and Leach is out. And that's how the bottom of the fifth gets started, bringing Calvin Murray to the plate. So the long back, long walk back to the dugout for Leach. Coach Guard is out in McCovey Cove. Keeping an eye on things. As Murray steps in, he's walked and he's lined out. Check swing. One hopper in front of the Astros dugout. No balls in one strike. Astros will go home after the ball game back to Houston. The Giants will go to San Diego. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Swing and a bouncing ball. Vizcayano had a good jump. He throws in time to get the speedy Murray. And there's two away. Well, that's not an easy play either because he goes down to shoot top height to get the ball with both both hands. I mean it's easier to go down there with one hand but here because of the definition of the ball he's got to go down with two and makes the play nicely. And here's Rich Aurelia who's two for two. Aurelia coming into this ball game. Was leading the National League in hits with 183. So tack on two more. Barry Bonds on deck. Mark Gardner throwing in the Giants' bullpen. The 1 0 to Aurelia. There's a strike. He wants that one back. I like to watch a hitter. If they're upset with a pitch that they think they should have taken a hack at, they'll give themselves a little love tap on the helmet with their bat as if they give them a self scolding. One and two. Reader is out of the game. You watch the rest from the dugout. Probably head back into the clubhouse. Here's the one two to Rich Aurelia. And it's low two and two. Miller with four strikeouts, a couple of walks, and now a full count. Miller since the first inning has really settled down. Pay off to Rich Aurelia. Right field, and it's going to fall in front of Alou. Right, outstanding at bat. You work the count to 3 2, then you just fight off a pretty nasty pitch, you throw a little grenade into right field. And he's 3 for 3, and here's Bond. That's a huge at bat for the Giants and prolongs the inning and he gets Bonds up there in the batter's box with somebody on base and Wade Miller out of the stretch. Now with the effectiveness of Miller against Kent, you wonder if Miller will go after Bond. He struck him out looking in the third. Which pitch is low, one ball and no strike. Now, the 63 home runs from Bonds. The Giants lead the National League at home runs. They've hit 210. If you keep them in the ballpark, you get a good chance of beating them. Bonds hits one high, hits it deep. He hits it out of here. Number 64, game time. And the big cat 
gives Bonds a high five. It's four to four. And the classic home run hitters make it look easy. Not a big hard swing. Just relaxed. Get yourself in position and let your hands generate the speed. And that's all it takes. And they want Bonds to take a curtain call and so far he hasn't come out but now he does. Kent waited patiently for Bonds to come out and now he'll get ready to hit. How about that stick snag out in the outfield by the fan that caught the ball. Here's Kent. Kent. Down the left field line Berkman moving over and he'll get there to make the catch to end the inning. Bonds lights up the fans here at Pac Bell Park. And his home run number 64 on the year ties it up Houston four, Giants four. All right Barry Bonds with a home run that uh, ties the ball game and for Bonds it also was home run number 558 in his career. And check it out again. Well, Bonds' home run is half the story. Watch the play from the fan. Classic plant. See you later. And he had an idea it was going to go, but as Mike said, check out this fan. Yeah, if you ever saw Back to the Future, Dr. Emmett Brown going over, <laughs> laying out, backhanded. And look at the feet come off the ground. Whoa, somebody help me out here. <laughs> That's a, a teeter job right there. <laughs> Emmett Brown, you are the man. He, <laughs> he, held it, he held it up as if to say, I held it long enough. Here's Hidalgo with a count of no balls and one strike. Mark Gardner out of the mound. Big curveball and it's pulled foul and it's nothing in two. 18 games for Mark Gardner has spent some time on the DL with some shoulder problems. Mark Gardner really can do a lot of things with the baseball, but doesn't have to use a curveball or change it to beat you. Strike three call. And there's a fastball at the knees. And he can corner pitch that fastball inside, outside at the knees, inside, outside, above the belt. Put you to sleep with a curveball changeup and then in a two strike count, come back with a fastball and just paint you right at the knees. See you. Here's Brad Osmus. For Bonds' his first home run in this series. Osmus has reached on an air and he's single. Center field for Calvin Murray. Murray. Goes back and he puts it away. And two very quick outs for Mark Gardner. And a lot of momentum out of the Giants dugout because of the two run bomb from Barry Bonds. And Gardner trying to get his team back into the dugout. And on the offensive side of the game to try to take advantage of it. Here's Wade Miller. Gardner, a 12 year veteran. Went to Fresno State, and boy, is he psyched up about their football team this year. He actually may have been thinking about that when he unloaded that pitch. <laughs> I'm not sure how he held that thing. One ball and no strikes. 64 homers. There's a strike. So Miller, one ball and one strike. Hang on, big fella. And that's pulled foul. And another fine catch. It's two and two. Now you held it long enough. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. And that's popped right below us. Young lady right below us made a pretty nice play. 
Nice round of applause. And she did it commando style, no glove. <laughs> All right. Nice play. <laughs> Three and two to Miller. That pop up is headed towards the seats. And a, a souvenir, it stays at three and two. Barry Bonds inches closer to Reggie Jackson on the all time home run list. Reggie Jackson, seventh with 563. 3 2 pitch. High fly ball to right field. John Vanderwall moving over. And he puts it away. Gardner with a 1 2 3 inning. Giants coming up in the sixth. It'll be Galarraga to lead it off. 4 4. Well, this Sunday at uh, 8 to 7 Central, Fox Family presents Mel Brooks Robin Hood Men in Tights. A thrilling tale about a man. A band of manly men in ladies' underwear. <laughs> a band of manly men. <laughs> manly men, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Did we, you come up with that? No. Hey, a couple of manly men in ladies' underwear. <laughs> Here's Andres Galarraga. You know, at Candlestick, maybe when we were playing for the Giants, anything to stay warm didn't matter. No, you had to have it. 0 and 1 to the Galarraga. Outside, one ball and one strike. You could wear tights at Candlestick. In fact, Daryl Hamilton used to play center field for the Giants out there. He wore a, a light wetsuit under his uni, just trying to stay warm. Galarraga having a hard time catching up to. The fastball from Wade Miller, it's one and two. Yeah, piano stick, all bets are off. Do what you want. Just stay warm. On the ground towards the hole in a base hit. It may have been a broken bat base hit, but Galarraga is aboard. I guess more than anything, it's called strength. Now Miller's made a couple mistakes today with his location on a breaking ball. They try to set up outside. They want the outside corner. This thing just lays right over the plate. Now it's just a real soft little rolling break to it. Good hit and pitch, and the big cat takes advantage of it. A tweener. Vanderwall is flied out and he's walked. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Vanderwall watches one go by. One ball and no strikes. It is cleared up. Nice sunny day here in San Francisco. Game time temperature 65 degrees. Foul back. Here's a look at some numbers. Wade Miller. 81 pitches, four earned runs, a couple of walks, four strikeouts to Morell heading to the Giants' bullpen. It's one and one to Vanderwall. Two balls and one strike. Larry Durker. Watching his young right hander, Wade Miller. Nelson Cruz starting to get loose now for the Astros. Foul back. You know, you get to this part of the year where you're deep into September. As of September 1st, teams are able to expand their rosters, and most teams that are contending for playoff spots will bring up some young arms, so. They have three or four extra pitchers in their bullpen. They won't go as long with their starters. Play the game a little bit differently than they do the first five months of the year. 
And now the count goes full to Vanderwall with Galarraga at first. And yeah. for Miller, 84 pitches. A decision for Dusty Baker as to whether or not he sends Galarraga at first base. Galarraga can run for a guy his size, 6'3, 255. He pretty good runner. Vanderwall, good contact man. Wade Miller gonna be the type of pitcher who's gonna throw something around the plate. And he goes. And Vanderwall pops this one foul. Castilla giving chase, but he'll have no chance. If football was very popular in Venezuela where the big cat grew up, I doubt you'd see him in a baseball uniform. Oh yeah, he'd have been a linebacker. Guy his size that could move as well as him. I mean he really ain't. When he first came into this league, he was a little bit smaller than he is right now, but he had above average speed. And back is Galarraga. He's 40 years old now. He still moves well. Another fine player that came out of the Montreal Expos organization. Three and two. Last fastball from Miller, 94 miles per hour. Galarraga goes. And another foul ball out of play. I think Larry Durkin talked about type when he was talking about his young arms. He talked about Oswald, Miller, Redding. He said these guys are all composed athletes. They, they, they don't really rattle in situations and they don't quit. They keep trying to make good pitches, which is what really got them through the minor league system quickly to the big league level. A lot of pitchers. Young pitchers, they worry about how they got into jams. They don't worry how about how they're going to get out of them. Runner goes, swing and a miss. The throw to second. Galarraga is out. So the strikeout double play. And quickly there are two down here in the sixth inning. And we're talking about the composure that Durker brags about his young pitchers having. And Wade Miller coming right in and winning a 3 2 challenge. He's just a good fastball hitter. And once they get the strikeout, an easy throw them out with Galarraga at second base. And look at that pitch on a 3 2 going right on the corner inside with that cutting action on a 91 mile an hour fastball. Outstanding pitch from Wade Miller. Yeah. Pitch track presented by Questech.com off the end of the bat, and this one is going to stay foul. We've Seen a couple this year. We're off the end of the bat. That ball has started out four feet in foul territory, and it's worked his way back into fair territory. <laughs> Owen one to Santiago with two outs. Miller up and in to Santiago as he goes down. Little head cheese. That was a changeup that got away from Miller. He didn't see a big look or a glare back or any stank eye throwing on the play from Santiago. He knew that was an off speed pitch that got away from him. Nevertheless, I'm sure Santiago not too thrilled about it. One ball and one strike. Little pop up. A long run for a Lou. Bagwell out, Bezio out, and it falls in between the mound and the home plate area down the right field line in the bullpen. You see a lot of those pop ups caught here at Pac Bell Park because of the configuration of this ballpark. A lot of right fielders will. Play more towards the right center field side. If normal positioning is here, they'll play over here. And when you play that far over to right center, you give up the line. The angle of the right field fence is such that if the ball hits, it's going to come back into the field. So because of that, they cheat away from the line. And you see a lot of Texas League, Texas League pop ups drop here in this ballpark. One and two to Santiago. To right field. Alou goes back. Still going back. He falls down. 
and he can't get it. Santiago is going to stop at second. Alou, even after he fell down, nearly caught it. Now, this is kind of a divine intervention double right here. Go back, you see the sun right in his goggles, plants, he loses his footing, and still staying with the play, just runs out of glove. It might it almost look like once he got there, he thought, well, this is where I'd like to be. <laughs> I can catch it from here. He looked like he was setting up to catch it sitting down. <laughs> well, you Santiago, you say a prayer of thanks when you run into second base. Because God was on your side. Here's a pitch to Feliz, and it's low 1-0. See now if you're a visiting player and something like that happens to you on the road you are going to hear a whole earful from the fans that surround the play up in the bleachers on the sidelines. Those fans. One and oh to Feliz he's 0 for two. Two balls and no strike. Had he have come up with it though it had been the play of the day. I mean he, he sat there and he. Obviously, you could tell he was thinking, well, now that I'm here, I might as well catch it. And he nearly did. It's 3 0 with JT Snow on deck. Now, you play this game long enough, and you will look foolish. And one more time, let's take a look. Plant, slip, bloop, reaches out. Yeah, I just missed it. <laughs> and the walk. JT Snow being announced as the pinch hitter. Here comes Bert Hooten, the pitching coach. Bert Hooten. Old Cub, old Dodger. Tommy the Sorted nicknamed him Happy because he smiled about twice a season. You know, Mike, from our vantage point, we obviously get to see this beautiful ballpark, and then we get to see the ships that go by. Right outside the stadium, one of the, the very large container ships here in the bay. And uh, good games, we love to watch them. Bad games, they keep us company. Always something going on in the bay. Hooten working his way back to the dugout. Happy. Happy Hooten. Happy Hoot. Smile twice a year. That was a good year. So it really was a reflection on not smiling. Exactly. Leave it to Lasorda. Pitch to snow and it's low to snow hitting 241. Wait, Miller can't believe it. That pitch has been called a strike a lot tonight. Or today rather. He thought he had strike one. J.T. Snow has faced Wade Miller four times. He's one for four with a double. Santiago at second. Feliz is at first. And that is a strike to even the count. Well, that's the same spot. Now everybody's confused. J.T. doesn't know what's going on. He's thinking that was a ball. It was just called a ball. He takes it again. Now it's a strike. Now nobody knows what's going on. The one thing you want from your plate umpire is consistency. Pretty much the same pitch. It was just called a ball. One and one. And Snow breaks down on a on a breaking ball. It's one and two. Wade Miller still with good velocity in that fastball. Good snap in that breaking ball. That was a good hook. Late break starting off above the belt, winding up down the dirt. And here's our Pitch track brought to you by Questech.com, showing you right there at the base. Snow breaks his bat right to Vizcaino to end the inning. Giants strand a pair. 
Seventh inning coming up. It's four to four. Seventh inning. Houston four. Giants four. Seven hits for the Astros. Six for San Francisco. And a new pitcher for Dusty Baker. It's Tim Worrell. So Worrell follows Mark Gardner, who followed Kirk Reeder. 63 games for Tim Worrell. Two and three, a 3 3 3 ERA. Worrell coming over to the Giants in a trade in the offseason. The Giants send very popular Bill Miller over to the Chicago Cubs. A fastball that averages around 88 to 90 miles per hour. Throws a slider. He's got a little cutter. That's a break between a slider and a fastball. It locates it well away to a righties into a lefties. Got a nice changeup. Really, that changeup has been the pitch that has has really brought him to be one of the quality relievers, the Giants staff, of which there are many. Both bullpens in these teams are loaded with good arms. Going right in on the hands of Craig Biggio. Biggio, a good high ball hitter. Good hitter, period. We've got to make good pitches against this guy. I think when all is said and done, when his career is over, he'll have over 3,000 hits and he'll be a Hall of Famer. Outstanding career. Up and in, one ball and one strike. On deck is Jose Vizcaino, followed by Jeff Bagwell. Seventh inning. And Bagwell breaks down and swings and misses one and two. I beg your pardon, that's Biggio. If you just joined us, Barry Bonds in the fifth inning hit his 64th home run of the year to tie the game. Back and out of play. I think the thing that I admire most about Biggio is the fact that he comes into this league as a catcher. And he's a good all around catcher. Matter of fact, I think you mentioned earlier he won a gold glove, maybe he won a couple. And then the Astros decide one year, well, we're going to put him at second base and maybe he can be a pretty good second baseman. Pretty good. Strike three call to Biggio. Well, he had so much speed that they wanted to save his legs. They felt if he was in a squat his whole career, he'd lose that speed. And he does not like this call here. A good backdoor changeup. Look at the movement. Of, brings that ball right back into the strikes on a low strike. But hey, look at that position. Right on the outside corner. Our pitch track from questtech.com says, see you later. The strike zone lit up red. Here's Vizcaino. This kind of pulls it foul. This kind of a former giant. Giants at the end of the 96 season traded Matt Williams to the Cleveland Indians, and this kind of was part of that trade, along with Jeff Kent, Julian Tavares. Kent, the only one left in a Giants uniform. As Vizcaino steps out. Octavio Dotel in the bullpen getting loose. He threw last night. One ball and one strike to Vizcaino. And Vizcaino. And the swing kind of rolled it over, and it's one and two. But the point I'm making about Biggio, Mike, is if you're a former infielder that played second base all your life, and all of a sudden the catcher's just going to walk out one year and play second base and then start just to 
have gold gloves all over your house. You don't like it very much. <laughs> it's easy to play second base. Yeah, I mean, I just thought that position was pretty hard. Anybody could do it. Heck, you got catchers can win gold gloves over there. Yeah, he was making a lot of people look bad. <laughs> Here's the 2 2. And that's poked foul. But the, any guy that ever played second base, very proud of the way that Biggio has taken over and done such a great job. Well, I always felt the same way, too, with, with position players who couldn't hit, all of a sudden, you know, I'll be a pitcher. And then they deal. Felix Rodriguez was a catcher in the Dodger organization, and now he's one of the premier relief pitchers in the National League with the Giants. It's not right. Two and two to Vizcaino. And that one is a slow comebacker to Warrell. And out is Vizcaino. Now watch the setups between Bagwell on the left side of your screen and Galarag on the right. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. Two very distinctly different setups. But when they come to contact time, that front foot goes down, their hands are in position, and they get right to the ball in a very direct route with power from the lower body. I mean, that's just perfect positioning. They are rotated right through behind the ball. The ball gets to them, and that is as good a swing with power and drive as you can teach. And here is Bagwell, who's two for three. And the first pitch is high. Every hitting coach will tell you that every power hitter generates that power from their lower body. They use their legs. They generate hip speed and hand speed and hip speed is where you get distance. Mm. One ball and one strike to Bagwell. Seventh inning a four to four tie. Tight to Bagwell. Well, try to get on the hands. This guy's about as exciting a player as I've seen him. He just lets it fly every at bat. And that pop up is going to be behind home plate and out of play. And Bagwell's one of those type of hitters that can lock into a streak where you just can't fool him. He gets on everything. Fastballs at the hands at 95 miles an hour. Changes up some backdoor at the knees. And he's on it. Never seems to be off balance or out on his front foot. Just spooky pitching to this guy. And the mainstay of that Astros team for a long time. Here's the 2 2. And he rolls it foul. And he just launches out after it. And it's really caused him some problems in his career. He flies at that front side and just explodes into the into the hitting zone. And he, he opens up that that left shoulder and exposes his chest to the ball. He's been hitting the hand a couple times, been broken up a couple times. They're going away. And on the ground to third. Police with a long throw in time to get Bagwell. And for Tim Morell, it's a one, two, three inning. Does we enjoy? It's a four to four ball game. Giants coming up. And it'll be the top of the batting order. All over the ballpark. And we've seen it since the Giants opened this series against the Astros on Tuesday night. Here's Calvin Murray. Murray is 0 for 2. He's lined out, he's grounded out, and he drew a walk. That last pitch from Wade Miller, number 100 on the day. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. And he's still throwing it by the Giants hitters. That last fastball, 91 miles per hour. Just off the plate, two balls and one strike. A number one draft pick for the Giants, Calvin Murray. 
Murray took a while for him to establish himself as a major leaguer in the dirt. Three and one and the Giants would really like Murray to do is try to keep the ball out of the air. Utilize his speed. Get it on the ground. 103 the number of pitches for Miller. And a strike Murray taking all the way and not a bad play it's three and two now when you've got speed like Murray has I mean you, you really make your living hitting balls on the ground hitting balls on the line balls in the air not good at bats. Murray down the right field line and out of play. Barry Bonds is due up third this inning. Three and two to Murray. And that pop up is a souvenir. Mike Williams starting to get loose for the Strohs. Felix Rodriguez getting loose for the Giants. Here's a 3 2. Murray possibly swung at ball four, pops it up. Osmus with room makes the catch. And that's out number one. And here's Richard Rillia. Aurelia, perfect today. Three for three. A double and two singles, and he scored twice. And really raising his average to 329. And it really swings at a pitch that wasn't close, and he takes a walk, has a meeting with himself. Very tough time for Richard Rui, a native of Brooklyn. Friends still missing. Constant correspondence with his family back home. A ball in a strike. Tough kid. One ball and one strike. In tight, Aurelia holds up. He's written on the back of his hat the letters of the fire department of New York FDNY and NYPD. Of course the flag stitched on the back of his uniform as every major leaguer has. Two and one. Off his fist on the ground of Vinny Castilla. Astros third baseman will throw a really out and there's two away. This is yesterday before the game the Giants wearing T-shirts with the letters FDNY God bless on thoughts and prayers with the fire department and the police department of New York. These teachers were brought to them by one of the ground crew members here at San Francisco is also a member of the San Francisco fire department. And to a man, the Giants yesterday wearing the T-shirts before the game, and many of them wore them during the game under their uniforms. And Aurelia really spoke well. He said, "We are not heroes. We're athletes. We're often put up higher than everybody else, but the heroes are the firefighters, teachers, the policemen, doctors." He said, "I really hope people understand that." Here's Bonds. Outside, and it's one ball and no strikes. Bonds with a home run in the fifth inning. Two and zero. Oh. There may be not a whole lot of managers in the big leagues that would let Miller pitch to Bonds in this scenario, but Larry Durker, who was a starter himself, let him go. Three and zero. Oh. When Durker took over at the helm of the Astros, one of the things that he changed was he started to allow his starters to go deeper in the game. 
And that was an unintentional intentional walk. Bonds his home run looked like this in the fifth. And it tied the game. Trying to swing of the bat, a great play from the fan out center. The walk by Bonds, 152 on the year, and here's Kent. And Kent off the end of the bat, dribbles it foul, and it's 0 1. Wade Miller opening up the at bat with the slider to steal strike one, had Kent out front. Kent. 0 for 3. Now he steps out. Last year's National League most valuable player. Kent trying to get a board for Andre Scalaraga, who's on deck. Low. Bonds showed signs that. He may have thought about going, but he held up. He's got 11 steals on the year. He's been thrown out twice. And a soft toss to chase Bonds back. Kent is hitting his best when he's driving the ball into right center field. Still a threat to steal. He does not go. And that pitch is high. Two balls in one strike. By allowing your starter to go deep in a ball game, you face a he'll face a, a hitter a third and fourth time. And that third and fourth time is a lot different than the first two times you face because your stuff is not as good. You've got to rely on a mixture of locations and changing speeds to get that hitter out. And fouls it back. It's two and two. And that's really what pitching is. It's upsetting the timing of the hitting. And with all the young arms that Durker has, you let them develop by letting them pitch to a hitter a third and fourth time. Plus, Miller's earned it. I mentioned earlier, 24 out of 28 starts this year. He's gone into the sixth inning or beyond. Kent pops one into right field. Alou racing in, still racing in, and he gets there and sliding head first, he makes the catch to end the inning. So, adventurous for Moises Alou here at Pac Bell Park. It stays 4 4. Seven complete here in San Francisco. Uh, the line scores the same with one exception. The Giants have committed an error. It's 4 to 4. And the Giants will send out one of their top relievers, and that's Felix Rodriguez. Yeah, this guy really has done a tremendous job this year for the Giants. 70th appearance on the year, 1.70 ERA, 81 strikeouts against just 23 walks, and those 81 strikeouts in 69 innings. And anytime that you have a strikeout or more in an inning, you are dealing for Felix Rodriguez. He has 45 hits and 23 walks. When you could add your hits and walk totals and they're less than your number of innings pitched, you've had a dominant year, and this is what he's done. Both the Giants and the Astros, we mentioned their bullpens, how effective they are. With Felix Rodriguez for the Giants and Octavio Dotel for the Astros, they in essence have two closers, one for the eighth inning and one for the ninth inning. Felix pitches the eighth for the Giants, Dotel the eighth for the Astros, and Rob Nin. Pitches the ninth for the Giants and Billy Wagner pitches the ninth for the Astros. So the luxury for both Dusty Baker and Larry Durker to have a, the type of a bullpen that if you have a lead late in the ball game, it, that team's going to be tough to beat. So here's Rodriguez facing Lance Berkman. 
And Berkman fouls it out of play. For those of you who may not have seen a lot of Felix Rodriguez, at times he can get to 99 and he can even hit the 100 miles per hour mark. Well, he just opened up the bat to Berkman with a 98 mile an hour fastball with some location on it. And this is a converted catch. Came up with the Dodger organization. And was moved out to the mound by Tommy Lasorda. At one point in time, he was the closer with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Their initial inaugural year, he was their closer. Giants picked him up. And he was a little inconsistent with his control. And Ron Paranowski and Dave Rigetti over the years here have really done a nice job with him. And he's a quality arm. He's a closer waiting to happen. One and one to Berkman. Swing and a miss. One and two. And he just threw it right by a quick bat. That last fastball, 97. But more so than just talking about how hard he throws, it's where he threw it. At the knees outside corner that's a rough rough combination if you're trying to hit it. But if somebody can beat that pitch he's right here. Lance Berkman. One and two. And it's low. Now they tell the story about. You know spring training. Doing all the drills that. Pitchers and catchers do and. Felix Rodriguez, as Mike was saying, then a catcher, was throwing harder than anybody in these drills. And somebody said, well, why not put that guy who has the gear on out on the mound and let's see what happens? Outside, three and two. And the Dodgers have always been a, an organization historically that have not been afraid to change players from. Catchers to pitchers from hitters. See if they can throw. And in this particular case, it's worked out for Felix Rodriguez. Here's the payoff. And it's low and in ball four. And you'd have to classify that as a pretty good at bat for Lance Berkman. Oh, indeed. Got down the count early, worked the count full, and then got the walk. That's a great at bat. This will be a good matchup right here. This is one of the best fastball hitters in baseball going against one of the best fastballs in baseball. Alou has walked. He's grounded out. And he's picked up a sacrifice fly. It's four to four here in the eighth. Pitch out. Nothing on. Watch Dusty Baker when Berkman did not go. He took his toothpick out of his mouth and he threw it to the ground. And he must have been certain that something was on. One ball and no strikes. Good time to go is right after a pitch out. Swing and a miss by Alou. I like the way the watch. I like to watch the way that Moises Alou holds the bat in his hands. He's got some big old paws now. You shake hands with with Mo Alou and then he's got some big big hands. But he makes that bat look like it's little. By the way it sets in his hands. Very relaxed. That bottom hand just eats the knob of the bat up. You don't even see it. One ball and one strike. Berkman with his lead. Side corner and Rodriguez gets the call. It's one and two. Oh, Alou does not like it. That pitch had some hair on it. 97 miles per hour. Let's watch the location and the frame job by Santiago. You can't say enough about the two catchers in today's game. 
Brad Osmus and Benito Santiago, two of the better framers in baseball. And you've got to be strong handed to hold 97 miles per hour to the outside location at the knees. That's a nice job of catching. One and two. Got him. And Alou is not going to be happy. Well, you get it once, why not go back out there again? And watch the reach over by Santiago to bring this ball back in. And here's the location that was called a strike. You can see the cut on the fastball, the movement. Malou not in agreement. And you can see his beef. But that's a big strikeout. Now I'm assuming, Mike, that what you said about Alou, the great fastball hitter that he is, you could say the same thing about the guy coming up next. No, you're right. Vinny Castilla, another good fastball. You're right. I said great. I'll stay by it. One of the premier fastball hitters in this league. He really is tough to throw one by. And explosive power to all sides of the field. And, and a guy that you probably shouldn't try to throw it by. He's one for three this afternoon. And Castilla likes the first pitch, and he'll be looking fastball. And it's low. One ball and no strike. They stay away from that tendency. He opened up the at bat with a slide ball. That may be one of the things that Dave Rigetti came out and told Felix Rodriguez. Berkman led the inning off with a walk. He's at first. Low and away, 2 and 0. It sounds funny to say you got to be careful when you throw 98 miles per hour. But against guys with fast hands and good fastball bats, that's that's the case. Not only do you have to feature 97 plus, you got to put it in a good spot. That's how good a fastball hitter Castillo is. And a strike. And a good spot. Right now, Vinny Castilla with a good idea of the velocity of Felix Rodriguez. Berkman with his lead. And that is high and foul and out of play. And that may reach the upper deck just shy into the club level. It's two and two. They have worked the hole at bat away. They've got the inside part of the plate set up big time. Castillo will chase above the strike zone fastball and it will go chase a slider below the strike zone. And a 2 2 count right here, Rodriguez does not have to come in the strike zone. And a throw to first. And Berkman is back easily. Rodriguez, the fourth pitcher for Dusty Baker. Reader started, then Gardner, Worrell, and now Rodriguez. Two and two. Kent, it's got it. Aurelia. Galarraga. No, it's Castilla. Is aboard, but Jeff Kent. With a very nice play going to his left. Oh, that was a play that was. Good on everybody's part. A belly slide by Kent coming up, and a nice exchange. We're really getting wide, and, and really for Galarraga just to keep the ball from going into the Astros dugout. A nice play on his behalf. But to get the lead dog here, that's where the play is nice. I thought the best that the Giants were going to settle for the out at first, but but Kent getting greedy, trying to get the lead out at second, and he gets it. So the Astros denied a runner in scoring position by the fine play by Kent. And here's Hidalgo. One for two with a sacrifice fly. To right field. Vanderwall puts it away. And after giving up a leadoff walk, Rodriguez gets out of it. For the Giants, the big cat will lead it off. It's four to four.
Houston leading 5-4, and you're taking a look at Billy Wagner. Uh, you're taking a look at one of the best left-handed relievers ever. And it's a live 95 plus fastball that he brings at you with late movement that kind of jumps in on on right handers and a, a breaking ball is kind of slurvy but it, it's it's quick. And again it is a pitch that gets hard in on righties. He'll throw it at any time. Like he said last year when he's having no problems it, it actually felt better to throw a slider than it did a fastball. But he's out there with his best stuff now. And Giants got to look at him in game one of the series and it was a dominant ninth inning. He could make you look foolish. That is how good his stuff is. Glenn Barker is now in center field. Richard Hidalgo moves to right. And Sean Dunstan will step up and lead it off for the Giants. Dunstan, a pinch hitter, hitting 284. And the first pitch is a strike, and it's 0 1. I think that's the thing about Wagner. He, he loads up from the third base side of the rubber, and he he throws a fastball that cuts and runs in on a righty. Loves that inside part of the plate. 2.91 ERA. Opponents hitting just 201 against him. That's good stuff. And that just missed the ball and a strike, not a Dunstan. Giants in this game have stranded 10. And they stranded two big runners in the ninth. A ball and a strike to Dunstan. Benito Santiago on deck. Wagner throws and Dunstan pops it back and out of play. And it's one and two. Really a pretty good matchup. Dusty Baker counting on the quick bat of Sean Dunstan to beat the fastball. It's cutting in on him from Wagner. Wagner's got the kind of fastball that such late movement that ball will jump in and hit it will break a swing down. And when he gets it going, he won't throw a breaking ball. He'll come at you with all fastballs. One two pitch. Inside, they'll look down to first, and Jerry Lane says no. And it's two and two. That's the slurvy sort of breaking ball we're talking about. Two balls and two strikes. Dunstan pulls it foul. Look out. That snuck in right next to Dusty Baker. All right. Don't get a whole lot of time to react. Look out, Skipper. Steve Baker's had a busy day. I put a bit on him. Made a couple picks. Yeah, that was in slow motion. Two and two to Dunstan. Foul back. The one stat on Sean Dunstan. In 169 at bats, he's walked twice. Is Wayne Gomes getting loose? So it's easy to figure that Sean Dunstan's going to swing. Two and two with the shadows creeping up to home plate. And Wagner throws, and Dunstan hits a high pop up into right field. Coming in is Hidalgo. Now he stops and he makes the catch, and that's out number one. And that'll bring to the plate Santiago. Bruce Suter, the great reliever of the Cubs, the Cardinals, and the Braves, used to say that when you come into a safe situation in a one run ball game, that first out is so important because it sets and relieves the tension of everybody in the field. It relaxes everybody, including himself, of course. Santiago swings at a pitch in the dirt. It's no balls in one strike. 
It's a game of first. First strike, first out, first run to score. You do that consistently as a pitcher and as a team, you're going to win a lot of games. For the backstop, and it's a ball and a strike now to Santiago. Wagner, not, not a big guy, 5'11", 180 pounder, but a real strong foundation, very strong legged. Let's see where he gets his power from. It's from his legs. Looked like Santiago was looking into Brad Osmus to see if he was okay. It's one ball and one strike. One and two. Well, you, you throw a couple of breaking balls down low, you get a strike, even the count, and then you come back and change the sight line of the fastball up above the belt. It's a rough assignment. You're looking low, and all of a sudden you're surprised high, and you can't catch up to it. So Santiago gets back in deep in the box. Breaks his bat. Wagner juggles it. Sets throws. Not in time. Catcher's legs moving down the line pretty good. Wagner coming in hard for this ball. Gets to it in an off balance position. Bobbles it. Goes the bare hand. Sets. And he thought he had him. First base umpire Jerry Lane said, I don't think so. And I think Wagner was right. I think the Giants just got a break. Oh, he had it by a lot. So Santiago doing a good sell job over there at first base. And the Astros catching a bad break. Pedro Feliz is the hitter. Cody Ransom is the pinch runner for Santiago. Feliz is 0 for 3 with a walk. High and away, one ball and no strike. Ramon Martinez has grabbed a bat for the Giants. He's in the on deck circle. Is the Giants trying to? High this one up, send it to the 11th. 1 and 0. Popped it back and out of play, and it's one ball and one strike. Pedro Feliz has got power. For Feliz, he's got seven home runs at the major league this year. Last year in Triple A ball. At 33 homers, 105 RBIs. And he's a good fastball hitter. Very high, two and one. I think we've got to put up Heath Allen. Eight hits for Houston, seven hits for the Giants. Giants have not had a hit since the sixth inning. Ransom with his lead. And Felice swings at a fastball and fouls it back. It's two and two. Oh, it's so tough to get the bat head out and catch up to that fastball. Born right in on you. The cutter at 94, 95 miles per hour. Saw the pitch he threw Santiago just burned right in his hand, shattered his bat. And that last fastball to Felice got off the sweet spot up towards the label. That's Wagner's specialty. Here's the 2 2. Feliz pops it up into right field. Hidalgo again comes running in. 18 inch bat. And then choke up. 0 1. A 
high pop up into left field for Berkman. He's underneath it. He makes the catch. And in 10 innings, the Houston Astros hold on and they beat the Giants. They sweep the three game series here at Pac Bell Park and they win this one by a final of five to four. So Billy Wagner comes in and Mike, the Giants have witnessed firsthand how tough these Houston Astros are. Oh, indeed they are. I mean, the, when the ball was turned over to the bullpen in the seventh inning, the Giants did not get a hit. In the last three of this ball game, the Astros bullpen struck out four. And you could very easily see the strength of this Astros club. So they come in after the six day break. They get three, a three game sweep of the Giants. And they stay on pace with the red hot St. Louis Cardinals. And it looks like that National League Central Division is going to be some kind of race to watch. So Houston wins it five to four. And we'll be back with more from Pacific Bell Park here in San Francisco right after this. Win it five to four in ten. Dwayne Kuyper and Mike Kruko with Jeff Bagwell. And Jeff, we've seen the Astros and they're very tough. Why is this team so good on the road? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, if I had an ingredient, I think everybody would want to know that. And, and I, I have no explanation for it. Um, we just uh, ha have played well. Uh, I don't think there's any anything I can point to. We get good pitching. We get some hits. Um, I, I'm not sure. Well, let's talk about the big hit in this ball game. You were at second base with Lance Berkman beat a real good slider from Rob Nin and got a pass Galarraga down the line for a double and allows you to score. What did that pitch look like from your vantage point being the runner at second base? Well, it looked like a hard slider down and in, and, uh, you know, that's a pitch that Lance can handle, even though it is from Rob Nin. Um, you know, he, he's a tremendous hitter. Obviously, you look at the numbers in the year that he's had. He's had some huge hits for us all year. and. Uh, you know, those are the situations you want. You want your fourth and fifth hitter coming up with a man on second base in scoring position. Uh, and Lance came through us for us bigly. All right, Jeff, a good ball game today and uh, have a good trip back to Houston. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Thank you to Jeff Bagwell. And uh, the Astros win it by a final of five to four. And we'll be back with more from the ballpark. Stay with us. We'll have more after this. Let's go in 10 innings. The Astros beat the Giants five to four. So that's it from Pac Bell Park. Thursday night baseball continues next week on Fox Family. Next Thursday, the Cubs take on the Astros starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Coming up next on Fox Family on the East Coast, step by step, West Coast, Big Wolf on campus. For my partner, Mike Kruko, I'm Dwight Kuyper. Goodbye from San Francisco.